Hello. Jack and Hagar gave me this. No one here by that name. Please. I crossed the narrow sea. I have nowhere else to go. You have everywhere else to go. But wait! Hey guys, what's happening? Niat here with Film Comics Explained. And as requested, today we'll be taking a look at the mysterious faceless men featured in the incredible Game of Thrones books and television series. The Faceless Men were essentially a guild of assassins based in the House of Black and White, located in the free city of Bravos, though their members were known to range far and wide across both Essos and Westeros. The guild would request exorbitant fees and in return would provide unparalleled success for their clients, using stealth and magic to bring down requested targets. The group considered themselves to be servants of the Many-Faced God, a god of death who was unknowingly worshipped by all religions in the world in the form of one god or another, and the weirwood face of the old gods of the forest, as well as the strangers of the Faith of the Seven, were two examples of deities representing the Many-Faced God himself. These gods, along with a handful of others, are also displayed in the atrium of their temple, along with the haunting Hall of Faces. The religious cult of assassins essentially believed that death was a merciful end to suffering, and for a price, they would grant the gift of death to anyone in the world, considering the assassination a sacrament to their god. It's for this reason that those who sought to end their own suffering were granted this rite, with access to poisoned water in the temple that gave them a painless death. The faceless men were trained to relinquish their former identities and become no one, which enabled them to become entirely different people, all in the service to the many-faced god. The guild also believed that as servants of death, they had to serve him above all else, and with that came the requirement of their delivery of the gift of death to certain people who were marked. Training in the House of Black and White, the faceless men developed the ability to use magic to physically change their faces, shape-shifting from one appearance to another with ease to carry out their objectives. Although they were able to change their faces, the faceless men weren't complete shapeshifters in that they weren't able to violate the law of conservation of mass to suddenly grow drastically taller or shorter, or even gain weight, though they could use props and costumes to aid in their transformations. Both men and women could become faceless men, with the only prerequisite being the correct training in the arcane ways of their order. Killing for personal gain, out of anger, or even out of hate was strictly forbidden by the Faceless Men, and since the Faceless Men were supposed to forsake their identities in the service of the Many-Faced God, they were only permitted to assassinate targets they had been hired to kill. This is why Arya Stark was such a bad fit for the guild, and why Jacqueen Hagar had asked Waif to kill her. Arya's life was one of pain and tragedy, with most members of her family having been slaughtered in cruel ways. This instilled in her a thirst for vengeance that could only be quenched with the death of those who had wronged her. Because of this, she was unable to become no one as the many-faced god had required of her, and was now using the skills that she had mastered under their tutelage for her own nefarious needs. In the novels, the Faceless Men were also based in the House of Black and White, and while they were a guild of assassins, they had philosophical and religious motivations to their actions, which often saw them rejecting offers that clashed with their ideology. Predating the Doom of Valeria, some of the founders of the Faceless Men were initially slaves who worked in the mines under the Fourteen Fires, which was the great volcanic mountain chain whose eruption had destroyed the Valerian Freehold over 400 years prior. The thousands of slaves that fled the lands faced death on a daily basis, and though they came from different lands and worshipped seemingly different gods, they all unknowingly collectively prayed to the same god of death. Over time, a splinter group emerged who held that since the god of death appeared to humans under many guises, the god of death must himself have many faces, and this saw the beginning of the faceless men and their worship to the many-faced god. Starting out by simply giving the gift of death to slaves who were suffering horribly, they eventually became skilled assassins that drew much of their strength from the many-faced god. Relocating to Bravos, which was itself founded by ex-slaves who had escaped from Valeria, the faceless men eventually constructed the House of Black and White, which served as their training grounds and headquarters through the ages. Much of their early training revolved around the discarding of their own true identity. This went on until they were taught to use their senses to root out deception and create disguises, whilst also manipulating magic granted to them from the many-faced god to change their appearance at will. Using a variety of methods to kill their targets, including a poison known as the Strangler, their techniques focused on specificity and the elimination of a single target, attempting when they could to make it look like an accident. 
The faceless men would cure the faces of the dead who came to die in their sanctuary willingly, and would hang these skins in deep vaults below the temples as masks, which could then be used to disguise them during assassinations. As their notoriety grew among the cities and regions, so too did their prices. The cost also increased relative to the importance of the target they were given, and the difficulty of the task itself. And in the first book, it was said that hiring a faceless man to kill Daenerys Targaryen would cost more than it would to hire an entire army. As mentioned before, the guild did reserve the right to deny a contract if it clashed with their ideals. They also had the ability to choose unique methods of payment. For example, if a lord had asked them to kill the child of his enemy, they reserved the right to request the killing of that lord's own child as payment for the deed. With that in mind, I'm eagerly anticipating the final season of Game of Thrones, and I'm pretty excited about HBO's announcement that they'll be making a prequel set before the Game of Thrones storyline. Well, that's all for today, folks. Thanks to all of you guys who requested we take a look at the faceless men featured in Game of Thrones. If there's any other stuff you'd like me to check out, please don't hesitate to ask. As always, it's been a pleasure. Niat here with Film Comics Explained. Thanks for stopping by. The many-faced god was promised a name. He must always receive what is his. You can't change that. I can't change that. No one can. <laughs> Haven't we been through this already? That won't help you. <laughs>